Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 13th of May. Black fungus complication adds to India's COVID-19 woes. Taliban should take opportunity for peace, says Afghan President Ghani. And Pakistan is at an Eid al-Fitr prayers amid mounting COVID-19 cases. And now for all the details. The black fungus of mucor mycosis is adding agony to the recovered COVID-19 patients in India as hospitals report a rise in cases of the rare but potentially fatal infection. India has not published national data on mucor mycosis but has said there is no major outbreak. The black fungus or mucomycosis is adding agony to the recovered COVID-19 patients in India as hospitals report a rise in cases of the rare but potentially fatal infection. The disease which can lead to blackening or discoloration over the nose, blood or double vision, chest pain, breathing difficulties and coughing blood is strongly linked to diabetes. And diabetes can in turn be exacerbated by steroids such as dexamethasone used to treat severe COVID-19. अभी क्या हुआ है कोरोना के इन्फेक्शन के बाद दर्दी की रोग प्रतिकारक शक्ति काफी हद तक कम हो जाती है उनमें से भी जो पेशेंट डायबिटीज वाले हैं जिनको लंबे समय तक स्टीरोड देना पड़ा हो टॉसिलिजू में भी या हायर ड्रग रखना पड़ा हो या जिनको आईसीयू में एडमिट करना पड़ा हो उनकी रोग प्रतिकारक शक्ति कम होने की वजह से ये रोग पाया जाता है the state-run Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, said that doctors treating COVID-19 patients, diabetes and those with compromised immune systems should watch for early symptoms including sinus pain or nasal blockage on one side of the face, one-sided headache, swelling or numbness, toothache and loosening of teeth. India has not published national data on mucormycosis but has said there is no major outbreak. Media reports have pointed to cases in Western Maharashtra state and its capital Mumbai and Gujarat. Meanwhile, India recorded more than 4,000 COVID-19 deaths for a second day in a row on Thursday, while infections stayed below 400,000 for a fourth day, with the virus rampant in rural areas where cases can go unreported due to a lack of testing. The second wave erupted in February, inundating hospitals and medical staff, as well as crematoriums and mortuaries. The South Asian nation's total case load now stands at 23.7 million. Moving on, the U.S. Department of State on Wednesday released its 2020 International Religious Freedom Report, which highlights a downward spiral of religious expression in Pakistan, most notably in the form of blasphemy laws. It also expresses concern over increasingly frequency of attempts to forcibly convert and forcibly marry women from religious minority communities. The 2020 International Religious Freedom Report released by the United States on Wednesday has highlighted a downward spiral of religious expression in Pakistan most notably in the form of blasphemy laws, punishment for which ranges up to death penalty. The report mentioned that there were many individuals imprisoned on blasphemy charges, at least 35 of whom had received death sentences, as compared with 82 individuals imprisoned on blasphemy charges and 29 who received death sentences in 2019. Human rights activists reported numerous instances of societal violence in Pakistan related to allegations of blasphemy, of efforts of individuals to coerce religious minorities to convert to Islam and of societal harassment, discrimination and threats of violence. Religious freedom is not more or less important than the freedom to speak and assemble, to participate in the political life of one's country, to live free from torture or slavery or any other human rights. Indeed, they're all interdependent. 
religious freedom can't be fully realized unless other human rights are respected. And when governments violate their people's right uh, to believe and worship freely, it jeopardizes all the others. The report also expresses concern over increasing frequency of attempts to kidnap, forcibly convert and forcibly marry young women from religious minority communities. And there continued to be reports of attacks on holy places, cemeteries and religious symbols of Hindu, Christian and Ahmadiyya minorities. In December 2020, the US Secretary of State had also redesignated Pakistan as a country of particular concern. In news from Afghanistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani said the withdrawal of foreign troops represented the greatest opportunity for the country as people marked the Muslim religious holiday of Eid al-Fitr on Thursday. Ghani observed prayers at the presidential palace and in an address to the nation called on the Taliban to choose peace or destruction. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani called on the Taliban insurgent group to use the opportunity for peace created by the foreign troops leaving the country as people mark the Muslim religious holiday of Eid al-Fitr on Thursday. Ghani observed prayers at the presidential palace and in an address to the nation called on the Taliban to choose peace or destruction. He reiterated that all the politicians want an Afghan-owned and Afghan-led peace process. Taliban insurgents said on Monday they would observe a three-day ceasefire in Afghanistan for Eid starting Thursday after weeks of increasing violence that gripped the country. Afghanistan ke badbakht ana jang de naam nida yau da dreer wazi shurbani lansai wa kendi khala dil khushala di khushan shaksan se pakpala khushale har Afghan hila da da chip Afghanistan ke sola horasi amniyat rasi lakada zai gunde khala para mi badin jundu ki. Conflict is raging in Afghanistan, with security forces in daily combat with the Taliban, who have raged war to overthrow the foreign-backed government since they were ousted from power in Kabul in 2001. Although the United States did not meet a May 1 withdrawal deadline agreed in talks with the Taliban last year, its military pullout has begun, with President Joe Biden announcing that all troops will be gone by September 11. Moving on to news from Nepal. Despite government's denial about infection of coronavirus amongst climbers, an expedition organizer of Nepal has confirmed infection amongst the climbers and members of teams this season. This comes as Nepal's tourism ministry earlier this month denied reports of infection running amongst mountaineers. Despite government's denial about infection of coronavirus amongst mountain climbers, an expedition organizer of Nepal has confirmed infection amongst the members of teams this season. During an interview with international news agency ANI, Mingma Sherpa, chairman of Seven Summit Tracks, Nepal's largest expedition agency, said there are positive cases in the mountains, but there is no serious case as of now and nobody has died dead due to corona yeah of course corona is not new case i already told that because there is uh, have a many uh, climber also get the positive but now they are all negative and they return back mountain again so and mountain is now actually not serious case they have the positive but not serious and also you know nobody die in mountain right now because by the corona the statement comes as Nepal's tourism ministry earlier this month denied reports of infection running amongst mountaineers as the second wave of the pandemic sweeps the Himalayan nation. This year Nepal issued record permits to 745 climbers despite the ravaging pandemic. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladesh on Wednesday received 500,000 doses of China's Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine as a gift to continue its vaccination drive, which was halted due to shortage of AstraZeneca jabs produced by the Serum Institute of India. The Chinese vaccines arrived in the country as the ties between the two countries apparently witnessed a sudden strain, with China warning Bangladesh against joining the Quad Alliance. 
Bangladesh on Wednesday received 500,000 doses of China's Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine as a gift to continue its vaccination drive, which was halted due to shortage of India-made AstraZeneca jabs. Chinese ambassador to Bangladesh Li Jiming formally handed over the vaccines to Bangladeshi Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momin and Health Minister Zahid Malik at a ceremony in capital Dhaka. The development came after the World Health Organization listed the Sinopharm vaccine for emergency use, giving green light for this vaccine to be rolled out globally. Their, their vaccine has been WHO approved also. So we are very lucky. We got a gift of 500,000 only. But we look forward to have China has the capacity, the competency to produce much more. Bangladesh launched the nationwide vaccination campaign on February 7 with the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine manufactured by Serum Institute of India. However, the registration for the vaccination was halted on May 5 in view of shortage of the vaccine. Meanwhile, the Chinese vaccines arrived in the country as the ties between the two countries apparently witnessed a sudden strain with China warning Bangladesh against joining the Quad Alliance. Volunteers of a non-profit organization have come forward to collect the ashes of India's unclaimed dead from the crematoriums in and around national capital New Delhi to give the bodies a respectful send-off as per Hindu traditions amid an unprecedented surge in COVID-19 deaths. Volunteers of Shri Deodhan Seva Samiti, a non-profit organization, have been quietly collecting the ashes of India's unclaimed dead from crematoriums in and around national capital New Delhi to give the bodies a respectful send-off as per the Hindu traditions amid an unprecedented surge in COVID-19 deaths. The ashes are taken to the river Ganges, a river many Hindus consider holy, for a final ritual which is said to ensure the souls of the deceased go to the heaven and escape the cycle of rebirth. Meanwhile, in the time of this crisis, authorities and non-profit organizations in India's eastern Orisha state are also comforting hungry stray animals as they are feeding them amid the ongoing lockdown. With roads and public places lying deserted, animals in many parts of Bhubaneswar city were seen wandering in the streets in search of food. Hotel or sab bandh hai, to lagbhag 60,000 kuch dog hai, to un logko khane ke liye problem aur to un log raste mein logo ko parishan karte hain, dant karte hain, to ham jaise jaise koshish karte hain ke jaise 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 animal ko feeding karenge aur achhe se achhe stables ko khane ke jaise is corona pandemic ko usko jinda rakhenge. As the COVID-19 figures continue to peak, the federal government has ruled out a complete lockdown to contain the worsening situation. Some states have imposed night curfews or partial lockdowns. Muslims across Pakistan on Thursday celebrated Eid al-Fitr festival to mark the end of the fasting month of Ramadan with mass prayers amid raging COVID-19 cases. Despite government advisories, hundreds of worshippers, many without masks, were seen attending prayers at mosques in parts of the country. Pakistan celebrated Eid al-Fitr, the festival to mark the end of the fasting month of Ramadan, with mass prayers amid raging COVID-19 cases on Thursday. Despite government advisories for citizens to maintain social distancing and avoid large gatherings, Hundreds of worshippers, many without masks, were seen attending prayers outside a mosque in Karachi city, which has seen an incessant surge in daily COVID-19 cases in recent days. Worshippers said they prayed for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. Anul Mubarak ke awale se khas tor pe har masjid mein jidhar humne namazein padhi hain, jidhar tarawi padhi hai, khususu duaein ki gayi corona ke awale se. SOP ko madde nazar rakte hue jo hai apne bachcho ko bhi us pe amal karwa rahe hain ke jo ghair zaruri jo tafriga hai unme na jaaye bachche hamare aur jo hai muktalif jo ek family program hote hain unse avoid kara jaaye taake jo hai ye baba jo hai phailne se this year's celebrations come as Pakistan struggles to contain a third wave of coronavirus infections. The government has imposed a partial lockdown from May 8 to May 16, in which most businesses, except for essential services, are to remain closed. 
the South Asian nation has seen a daily death toll of more than 100 in recent weeks. The country's health ministry reported 3,265 COVID-19 cases and 126 deaths on Wednesday. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.